In the previous videos, I talked about the direct use of Stokes and Gauss. By direct, I mean going from one side of the theorem to the other under the right assumptions. In this video, I want to talk briefly about indirect uses of Stokes and Gauss. There are some clever tricks with these theorems that are more than just going from one side to the other, and I want to show you a couple of those tricks. So, consider this field and gamma being any closed curve. A closed curve is the boundary of some surface, so I can use Stokes to change this into a flux integral over the surface of the curl of the field. Well, the curl of this field is 0, z, 0. However, now consider the field G. The curl of G is also 0, z, 0. So the line integral of G over gamma is also the flux of 0, z, 0 over the surface. I can use Stokes for both integrals. Therefore, I can essentially switch from the field F to the field G for the line integral via Stokes' theorem. And G is a much simpler field than F, so there's a good chance that the line integral of G is easier to calculate than the line integral of F. And in doing this, I don't actually need to calculate anything about the surface or the flux integral to make this conclusion. I just need to know that that surface exists. So Stokes can let me change the field for a line integral over a closed surface as long as I change to a field which has the same curl as the original. And that's pretty clever. There's some nice terminology that applies to cases like the previous example. If G is the curl of some other field F, then F is called a vector potential for G. This mirrors the previous definition of potential, which could also be called scalar potential in contrast. Scalar potential uses its gradient, and vector potential uses curl. For the scalar potential, I could test if a function had a potential by taking the curl, and if the curl was zero, as long as I was working on a simply connected open set, then there was a scalar potential that I could find. The same thing happens here. On a simply connected open set, a field has a vector potential if its curl is zero. Sorry, if its divergence is zero. Vector potential if its divergence is zero. And this is nicely in parallel with the previous result. It's just using a differential, different differential operator. Now let me move on to a, another clever use of the theorem. In this case, sigma is a surface of revolution I get by spinning the graph of this particular square root function around the x-axis for x from 0 to 3. The field I care about here is f equals 7, negative z, and y. I'm going to let mu be another surface, the circle of radius 1 in the yz plane. This second surface closes off the opening of the first surface. So between them, they make a closed surface. And finally, notice that this field has zero divergence. All right, I have all this set up. What does this do for me? Well, mu and sigma made a, make a closed surface. So I can use Gauss to change this into a triple integral over the enclosed region. But the divergence of the field is zero, so the triple integral also has to be zero. It's just the integral of zero. Well, that means that the flux integral over sigma must be equal to the negative of the flux integral over mu. Sigma was this surface of revolution of a square root function, and mu was just a disk. The disk, for most fields, is going to be a lot easier to work with. And this result tells me that I can change the surface at least up to a plus minus sign. And why does this work? Well, it works because mu and sigma share a boundary and thus close off each other to make a closed surface. And this actually gives a nice general observation. If two surfaces have the same boundary, and if f is incompressible, that is, has zero divergence, then the two integrals have to be the same at least up to a plus minus. And the sign here will depend on the direction of the normal, on the orientation, as it always does for flux integrals. This is another nice clever use of the theorem, this time using Gauss's theorem. And I don't actually need to do the triple integral at all. I can just use Gauss's theorem to make a nice conclusion about changing the surface for a flux integral. In summary, this particular video is meant to demonstrate that there are a lot of creativity in the use of these theorems. Putting this all together, the last three videos, shows that calculating line and flux and triple integrals it is, is a whole area with quite a lot of creativity and flexibility, a lot of ways in which the setup and approach and strategy can be altered and improved and things can be moved around using the clever results that we've been developing in this course.